Hello everyone. Today the topic that I will be discussing is all about the Helicopebra armigera. Helicopebra armigera is a species of Lepidoptera in the family Noctidae. It is known as the cotton ball worm. Corn earworm in all North African it is called ball worm or scarce bordered straw in lateral in the UK. The larva feed on a wide range of plants including many important cultivated crops. It is major pest in cotton and one of the most polyphagous and cosmopolitan pest species. When we say polyphagous species are those that can feed on a wide range of plants or animal matter, often belong to different taxonomic groups in the context of pests, polypagus species are particularly troublesome because they can infest and damage various crops, ornamental plants, and natural ecosystems, while the cosmopolitan pests are organisms including insects and rodents that have adapted to thrive in urban or metropolitan environments. Next slide is the taxonomy of Helicoberpa almigera. The official common name is cotton bollworm. Scientific classification um, Helicoberpa almigera is kingdom animalia, um, phylum under arthropoda, class under insecta, order under lepidoptera, superfamily noctoidae, family noctoidae genus Helicoberpa species each armigera. The binomial name is Helicoberpa armigera. Um, the next slide is morphological features of Helicoberpa armigera. The cotton ball worm is very variable in both size and color. The body length varies between 12 and 20 millimeters with a wingspan of 30 to 40 millimeters. The four wings are yellowish to orange in females and greenish gray in males, with a slightly darker transversal band in the distal third. And the external transversal and submarginal lines in the reniform spot are diffuse. The hand wings are pale yellow with a narrow brown band at the external edge and dark brown spot in the middle. The species comprises two subspecies. Um, the, the other one is Helicoberpa armigera, is native and widespread in Central and Southern Europe, Temperate Asia, and Africa. Helicoberpa armigera conferta is native to Australia and Oceania. The Former subspecies has also recently been confirmed to have a successfully invaded Brazil and has since spread across much of South America and reached the Caribbean. It is migrant species able to reach Scandinavia and other northern territories. And the next slide is about the life cycle of Helicoberpa armigera. The female cotton ball worm can lay several hundred eggs distributed on various parts of the plant. Under favorable condition, the eggs can hatch into a larva within three days and the whole life cycle can be completed in just over a month. The eggs are spherical and 0 to 0.4 to 0 0.6 millimeters in diameter and have ribs surface. They are white and later becoming greenish. The larva takes 30 to 22 days to develop reaching up to 40 millimeters long in 6 in star. They are rather aggressive occasionally, carnivorous and may even cannibalize each other. If disturbed, they fall from the plant and curl up on the ground. The pupa develop inside a silking cocoon over 10 to 15 days in soil at a depth of 4 to 10 centimeters or in cotton balls or maize ears. Um, all species of 
bulk cotton or Polyphagus and cosmopolitan pest. Larva attack more than 60 species of cultivated and wild host plants. The most important crop hosts are the rice, cowpea, cotton, pigeon, pea, and tomato. Other hosts include field beans, ground nuts, okra, flax, soybeans, and tobacco. Next slide is about the primary damage and secondary damage. The greatest damage is caused to cotton, tomatoes, maize, chickpeas, alfalfa, and tobacco. The economic results of harmfulness in Central Asia is 3 to 5 larvae per 100 plants of long staple cotton and 8 to 12 larvae per 100 plants on medium staple staple cotton in cotton crops bloom that have been attacked by open prematurely and stay fruitless. When the bulbs are damaged, some will fall off and others will fail to produce length or produce length of an inferior quality. The secondary damage or secondary infection by fungi and bacteria are common and may lead to rotting of roots. Injury to the growing tips of plants may disturb the development, maturity may be delayed, and the fruits may be dropped. The next slide is about management. The first one is um, prevention. The Cavill Lead Program plant-wise and their partners suggest planting trap crops and interrupting with crops including cowpea, sunflower, maize, marigold. They also recommend rotating with cereal crops and other non-host crops to prevent the population from building up. Owing to its strongly dispersive habits, efforts to regulate the influx of Helicobopra armigera into crops is generally not a viable option. Um, introducing birds, persons, and providing habitats for natural enemies are methods that can be used to prevent pest population building up. Um, next is monitoring. Field monitoring of pest population is necessary to determine whether the threshold has been exceeded and control measures should be taken. The economic thresholds of pest density where the value of the expected benefits derived from its exit to the cost of implementation depends on the knowledge of the relationship between population density and economic loss. However, it is often difficult to obtain precise data on this relationship because it is fairly simple and many extraneous factors both socio-economic and environmental. Next is about the dairy control. In small plots, plant wise and baking and destroying eggs and young caterpillars is possible. Cabby and plant wise partners recommend introducing light and pheromone traps to trap adult smuts. Plant wise and partners have suggested the release of natural enemies, including the parasitoid. Another aspect control is in the use of insecticide. Again, Selecobepa armigera has severe incipient resistance. Insecticides which are which aid particularly damaging to natural enemies. An example of this is the resistance management strategy developed in Australia where the use of pretroids was confined to particular places in cotton growing season. Um, then other the control that can be used is the cultural control. Cultural control, manipulation of the crop or cropping system and land management have been tried as tactics to manage cotton worm population. That's it for thank you for listening.